So I wanted to start the conversation here by asking uh, each person, uh, first of all, a little bit about what they're doing in their work. Um, starting with you, Kim, what kind of work do you do currently? Uh, that's always changing a lot. Um, at Make Amazing, we do so many different things. There's no two days that are really much alike. In strategy and in creative strategy specifically, a lot of what I do works with finding data and finding insights to make better creative decisions and campaigns that are going to be more effectively and working with awesome vendors, whether they're development or design or experiential, to then execute and see those kind of all the way through. And how about you, Cully? I recently just moved my uh, office from Santa Monica to Los Angeles, so lately I've been um, doing a plethora of jobs. Uh, but I, I, I am the owner and, and uh, senior artist at Scully FX. Um, we handle uh, mainly music videos uh, for the top stars. And uh, I, I, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, we, we make them presentable for video. We take away their flaws so their fans can't find those little images and make mimes out of them. <laughs> so, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm an artist, but I also do the tech work. I build my machine rooms, build computers, uh, pretty much from end to end. Business is a small company. I wear many hats. And how about you, Mike? Uh, at Purple, um, really, it's, it's a lot of different things. It's um, running a business at this point. Um, when I started, I was actually doing development. Um, and I was actually a grad here at Full Sail too. And um, it kind of just evolved over time as we brought on more people on staff. So really now it's day-to-day -day operations, uh, just making sure that what we do uh, with our projects is in line with what our clients' goals and objectives are, much like uh, Kim was talking about. So it's really data-driven design, decision-making, uh, just to make sure that we're, we're always in line and move the needle for our clients. Jason? Um, so I, uh, Royale is a, um, a design uh, studio. We're a design and production studio. So basically, uh, we currently have two offices, one in Los Angeles and one up in um, Seattle. We just opened up our Seattle branch this past year. And we really um, start at the design phase, because we believe that, um, especially with the media landscaping, <laughs> media landscape changing so much, um, it's, it really comes down to design and concept, and then the execution, whether you want that to be on a mobile app, or if you want that to be a 30-second spot on, a tele on TV. Um, it's not traditional anymore. It's changed so much. So basically, um, we, we start from the design, and then we figure out how um, to complete and execute the, uh, the actual uh, concept, whether that be photoreal CG, if that's claymation, if that's um, cell animation, whatever that might be. So, um, so yeah, and we, we really just love creating cool stuff and playing. So that's kind of what we do. So my next question is, how did you get started in the field, and what work did you show to land your first job? And I'll start with Kim. What work did I what at my what first job? <laughs> well, here, here's what I was thinking about. You know, it's like when you walk into a place and you're showing your work to a potential employer or even a, a client if you're a freelancer. Um, what, what sort of, you know, what do you think um, got you your first job? What kind of piece did you show that, yeah. that kind of spiked their interest in you? Okay. Sorry, I like to be very clear about my questions. Um, well, I mean, my first jobs, I really had just student work, you know, and I was a really um, active creator of stuff, and I made stuff that meant a lot to me. So, you know, I could, I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, some people make, you know, Comedy Central bumpers when they're in school, because that's like what they're really into. I made a bunch of really weird political videos and stuff about like the World Bank protests that were going on with photos from friends of mine and stuff because that meant a lot to me. And they were really rad. And then I was like, oh, 
other people don't care about this stuff as much as me. So then I, you know, cut, <laughs> cut it way down, and I realized that I needed to show um, more the aesthetics and the execution than necessarily just the story. So I had, um, I had a pretty short, tight reel, and I had um, integrated some animations of screenshots of websites and things like that so that people would understand in video what the breadth of my capabilities were. So it wasn't just like, oh, I can make a 3D tunnel that I fly a camera through, but like, oh, I can also you know, do a logo, and here's the logo, and then here it is animating it. And, uh, you know, and I showed that on a really sweet CD-ROM, because it was 2003. And people were like, oh my god, CD-ROM. Uh, so <laughs> Um, and, and, and online too, I had a website and um, you know, that was really helpful then and I, I can't imagine anyone does it now. Jim, I was going to say, back in my day I walked around with a film reel and I hoped that they had a projector that they could actually show it. Yeah, I mean you can't, that's, that's actually a really good point and I, I come across people sometimes that will bring their lap, they'll bring like a laptop and then they won't have their dongle and like I'll have the projector. So then we have to sit like awkwardly close together to like look at their work, but I don't really know them. So that's just the consideration. I like to, like always being prepared is really nice. I like when, when people have a book when they're designers and they come with like really sweet printed stuff. Especially if they're doing print work, like if they've done posters or something. Yeah. Kelly? Um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Um, but, wait, uh, picture this, you walk wait. into a place and you're, you're a young designer, you're just um, walking into an interview and you, you have this portfolio of work that you did. I think back about when you first experienced that. What was the thing that really stood out in your portfolio that you think got you the job? I, I kind of went about it a little differently. Um, uh, the, the course that I was in here really didn't quite have what I wanted at the time to, to be in my portfolio, so uh, we did a CD-ROM project for our final project and I wanted to be in visual effects, so it kind of didn't really mesh. Uh, but I found um, a random phone call from a buddy and uh, found out that in Miami there was this system called Flame, which at the time was a like quarter million dollars or a half a million dollar machine and I wanted to see it. And these guys sold them, and there was a production company in the same office. So I just went down there and, and met them and said, hey, I'll do anything to be here. And um, I, I ended up working there for over a year for the two different companies, the production company and the post company, and uh, for free, pretty much, just to be close to this box. And I actually lived there on a futon so I could learn this machine. And while I was there, I got to work on a few, uh, a few projects and I amassed a small reel um, and eventually left that job because you need to almost always leave your first job because that's where they take advantage of you. And you, the way you move up is change jobs. So I left there and uh, went to Los Angeles with a small reel and a VHS reel. VHS, I don't know if you know what that is. Um, I had a pack of VHS reels and I printed out every post house that I could find on the internet with my AOL dial-up account and uh, just went and beat down every door till somebody gave me a job with my small reel. And I ended up at the post group uh, doing dirt fixes at night in an inferno, the old cleanup fixes. And that's where I started meeting people and networking and it went on from there and built my portfolio and uh, built the relationships which are just as important as a portfolio. You're absolutely right about that. And Mike? Um, in terms of my first job, I was fired from a pizza parlor two days into, uh, into the, no, it's probably not relevant here. Um, but honestly, I think um, it's really about building connections as early as possible. Um, coming from Full Sail, they have an amazing career development department. And uh, to be honest, that's how I got my first gig, was even before I graduated, I focused on final project, I focused on the work that I did here, and I actually did some freelance work outside of um, you know, the, the stuff you get, you, we're doing here. Um, and as long as you can find the time to do that, one, it shows that you're, you have an entrepreneurial spirit, two, it shows you're dedicated to your craft, and if you have a portfolio built around all of that, 
then um, career development actually loves that here because they get to, to pimp that out to other companies. And um, on the flip side, now I actually am, am on the reverse of that because a lot of our um, staff are actually full cell grads here in Orlando. Um, so we always love coming to Final Project and seeing um, what the students put together because you know, as long as you show that you are dedicated and you can put those things together, then it really does take you, take you pretty far. Excellent. All right, so um, it was pretty interesting because when I was here, um, I think it was like one of the first super coursers. Um, now you all have like a thousand degrees, but back in the day, <laughs> there were only three. And um, so, you know, when I found out about this school in Florida that had kind of a funny name and they, you know, taught some really cool stuff and I came here and I saw, you know, the flight to Florida and then somebody, I think John Phelps, like, levitated out of the stage and <laughs> there were, like, laser beams and fog lights and I was like, I think this is my school. I think this is the school I need to go to. <laughs> so I got here and, you know, the fog parted, um, the laser lights went down and then we got to work. And, um, you know, through my whole experience here, I was always you know, proactive and um, constantly in labs and constantly trying to learn. And I started off in the recording arts, um, really wanted to be a musician, that's my background. And then when I got done with the recording arts, um, a year later, I was only 17, or 18 at the time. So um, I went into film and video, and then I went into digital media, which was a new course here. And in digital media, that's when it all kind of came together for me. And so every single class, whether it be I'm soldering or I'm doing catering on sets or whatever it is, I did it with 300%. So when it came time to graduate, um, I put all my effort into this um, grad vid video that we did. And um, my, you know, our side of the industry was just a kind of a virgin, it was like, it was a brand new side of the industry. Advertising and digital um, commercial art was kind of a new thing. And um, so I went on the inter internet and I put together what I like to call, and I'm, I'm kind of a dork, so sorry, but I, I put together my pro pack, and that's what I used to call it, um, where I, I basically went through and I researched 10 companies and I figured at least one out of 10, somebody's gotta hire me, right? So I went to LA in my 87 Dodge Caravan with like 100 bucks in my pocket, almost died in a tornado driving across the country. And I got out to LA and I lived in my 87 Dodge Caravan for two weeks. And I walked into my first interview and um, I really didn't have that much to show. Um, my reel, uh, if you guys come at 11 o'clock, I'm gonna show my re original reel because it's quite the sight. But, um, I just walked in with a VHS as well. My reel was 15 minutes long. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. I was really proud of it. Um, but, um, you know, I basically went in and the only thing that I had and the only thing that got me hired in my first job was the fact that I knew my, like I went in, excuse me, beep that out, please. Um, I knew my stuff <laughs> and, um, um, I knew who was working, I knew who was producing the projects, I knew all about their work, I was a huge fanboy of what they were doing, and I think that came off in my interview. And the first, and I'll share this real quick, sorry, I'm, I'm being a little long-winded, but my first um, gig that I went into, so I went into one of my very first interviews, and the creative director laughed at my reel. <laughs> And, and it's, that, that kind of sucks as a student. Like you're getting out and you're like, here's my VHS and my pro pack and my hair is parted on the side and I'm wearing, you know, like whatever. And I'm driving up my 87 Dodge Caravan, please give me a job. And they laugh at my reel. So I, I left that, um, uh, that interview kind of, kind of devastated. And then I went to my next interview, which was my number one company. They hired me. And then what now, 15 years later, I have a company. I've had it for seven years now. And the funny thing is that I go up against that same creative director that laughed at me in 2000, and I beat her every single time. <laughs> so I'm like, who's laughing now? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, so I guess you know my next question is for for each of our panelists is what do they look for when they're hiring uh, freelancers or potential employees? And this time I'm going to start with Jason. Oh, okay. Well, what do I look for? <laughs> um, you know, I, if it's hard to pinpoint the one thing that I look for because. Um, I just look for an emotional response that I get from your work. You know, if, it's, if you love it and you put it out there and you, and you show it, um, I really look for, you know, A, if you've put some thought into your branding, you know, how do you represent yourself? If you have a Facebook page with all kinds of funny things on your Facebook page, I might think twice because, you know, um, I've actually had students who, um, who have, you know, Facebook me and, um, I'll see their feeds pop up once in a while, and I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I would have posted that, you know, to Facebook. <laughs> and as an employer, you know, you want to be sure that um, you're, everybody is representing your brand properly, so you want to make sure that everything is respectful. Um, but, you know, that's on more of like a, a, a personal level, but as, like, as far as the work, um, I usually like to look for something that's well-crafted, well-put-together, well-branded, um, that you actually put some thought into it. Um, back in the day when we were, you know, submitting DVD, um, DVDs, you know, as your reel, I get a lot of student reels with Sharpie marker DVDs, which I, it's my personal biggest pet peeve. I really don't like Sharpie marker DVDs. I'll, I'll accept them today if you have them, <laughs> but I usually don't. Um, but the thing is that it's like, you know, Epson printer, come on, you know, go down to Staples and buy something and slap it on there and, you know, do something cool. I've, and the most unique things that, um, that get my attention, because I get a lot of reels, um, is if somebody, um, one time I got a, a note in the mail, um, it was very mysterious actually, it was this note, and it was folded up like, you know, back in the days when you used to fold up notes and like pass them before texting. Um, and so I got this note, and basically somebody said that they really loved, you know, the work and, and the company, and, you know, would I check out their website? Well, that instantly piqued my interest, and I was like, all right, that's pretty cool. All right, so somebody is, is smart, and it, that's pretty cool. So then I, you know, of course I went to the website, and they turned out to be an incredible designer, um, animator, and I knew at that point, because they were creative, and it's the creative thinking you know, you can, show, you can show me so many logo animations, but the way that you package it and you put it out there, um, I really believe in, in trying to foster um, a really, like, you know, when I, when I bring somebody into the studio, um, I can't be there every day for you. Like, you really have to have your own perspective um, because I'm, I'm just too busy. But, a lot of, but I do like to watch people have the aha moment as soon as they get in because this, the business is very different than, than what you'll ever perceive it. I learned it um, when I got my first gig and it was really um, uh, stressful, let's just say, when I got out of school. <laughs> so, anyway, I just look forward to some cool people. You know, you gotta be cool. <laughs> How about you, Mike? Uh, for us, it's <clears throat> because everything we do is internet-based, whether it's websites, mobile apps, internet marketing, that kind of stuff, everything that we look for has to be internet-driven and they ha you have to think about how you're presenting yourself online. So, um, you know, one, one good thing is when we do get applicants, we Google for them, you know? If you, not to say everybody here needs to be an expert in, in search engines, but, you know, if we can find you and we can find your portfolio and we can find your LinkedIn, um, that, that does actually go a long way. And it's really, part of the craft is your creativity, part of the craft is, is your artistic ability. Um, but because we work in teams where we're at, you also have to have really great people skills and you have to be able to, to cooperate and work with others. Um, a lot of times artists try to work in a vacuum and that, that could be damaging in, in certain circumstances. Um, so when it comes to being able to find you, you know, if you have a LinkedIn profile, if you can get uh, your course directors and instructors to endorse you, that really does go a long way. Don't do it right now, wait till you graduate, because they probably don't want me saying that right now. Um, but it's, it's really about connections, it's about who you know. Um, but when you, uh, when you do have a portfolio, it, it does have to wow you, like he said. Um, and especially online, you have to have some kind of internet presence. So if we pull up your own website that has your stuff on it, 
Um, that's really where a lot of experiences are going today is, is internet-based. So even if you're in, the, in video, if you're in show production, right now you know, this is being streamed online. It's about the online experience as well. So we have to see that you're capable of thinking within that realm and you're thinking about the broader audience and, and how your work is being presented in different mediums, whether it's online, whether it's streaming, whether it's mobile, whether it's uh, traditional desktop, tablet, whatever it may be. Thank you. Well, for me, it's, it's slightly different. Um, we, I usually receive emails or social media uh, pokes, I don't know, <laughs> uh, uh, messages through social media. Um, a lot of the time, I just don't have time to look at them. So it's almost like a timing issue with me. If, if I get the right email at the right time, I'll take a look, and then that could go from there. Um, sometimes when I'm here, I meet students. Uh, we're not a big company, so I don't have a, a constant flow, but um, what I usually look for is, is uh, you know, just a strong um, showing of the basics, like roto, uh, keying, um, some kind of effects animation or design, and, and see if it's strong or not, and um, if that catches my eye, that, that could lead to a, an email back, or, um, and then... A lot of it has to do with location. We don't really work too much remotely, so if you're in town and I can like see you, usually on a whim, like I want to see you tomorrow, come in, let's talk, and then I usually I, I, I usually hire interns and bring them up. Um, so I usually somebody comes in, I check out the work and make them start the next day uh, and and go from there. But it's a lot to do with personality at that point. Uh, I see the real, I see the. the um, the strong or weak points and, and, and talk about it, but then just get a feel for the person if, they, if they're gonna work well in the group because we work so hard and so close together that if you're not gonna fit in, it's not gonna work out. So uh, it, it's a lot of different factors and personality I'd say is more than 50% with us because we just have to, have to work so close together and, and make sure things mesh. And uh, with me, you know, we can teach a lot of the skills going in. So if I can see some strong skills going in, that's even better. But if the person, if the skills are somewhat um, uh, lacking, but the personality is there in the interview, you know, sometimes that even that goes goes further. So that's Kelly, fun. I had a question for you. If, if uh, the timing wasn't right, and you had somebody who came along that was amazing, um, do they do they leave pieces behind to? Remind you of who they are? And I imagine you see a lot of people come, come It's in. just sometimes I just don't get to their emails. I get like, you know, I don't know how much you guys get, but I get like 200, 300 emails a day. Yeah. Yeah. So it just, it just goes down the line. So um, email once a week and it might get to the top of the heap at the right time. I, I, yeah, I always call it um, um, dropping below the line. You know how in your email you have a line. As soon as it drops below, it gets lost. Um, I think that a lot of students, um, when they're sending in portfolios and reels, get very offended and upset and actually take it very personally if we don't get back to you. And that's totally justifiable and you should feel that way, but that's not because we don't like you. That's just because we have a thousand things happening. I think the most, the best piece of advice that I could give to any of you guys going out for an interview is be persistent. There's nothing wrong, I always play the joke, I still do this to this day, even with my clients. Hey, I sent an email, God, there was something wrong with my server. Did you, did you get a chance to see it? Or, or you know, just, just make it in a non-intrusive way, but keep it short and sweet, please. I don't need your whole life story. Just a couple sentences and, hey, I'm a fan. You know, I've always wanted, uh, the best is, you know, getting fans and, you know, they love your work and, the best thing you can do is compliment a job that you see that inspires you, that definitely is like, wow, that was really cool. That, that opens up dialogue between you and the employer, potential employer, you know? If you, and I do this all the time with my, my clients. I'll, I'm a fanboy, you know, of most of the stuff that's happening, and I'll research who did it, email them at the agency, and just say, drop a quick, hey, you know, just wanted to say, great job, amazing work, it was very inspiring. You know, and then I have my little, you know, my Royale email address in the bottom. If they want to respond, they can. What about you, Kim? What's that Ghostbusters quote where it's like, we have the skills, we have the power. It's Miller time. Um, I just wanted to do that and then be done. Uh, <laughs> you know, for Make Amazing, it's... Uh, 
it's really, it's really the person is so, so important. I think you really hit that on the head. Even when I was a creative director at a boutique firm or you know, as a strategist, when I would be part of the hiring process at other places, it'd always be like, do they have the skills? Do they have the style? Do we want to be with them every day? And then that would be like the last, like, then let's have them back in. And I mean, I've definitely like been in the room and, and reviewed portfolios at big, bigger agencies and just seen some amazing work. And then like the dude is like leaning back in the chair and he's like, flip flops on. And he's like, it's good stuff, you know? And we could like tell he like sandwich in his beard. He had just come from lunch. Like, and we're like, we're, we're gonna give you a job, like, maybe, and you obviously want it. Like, and it's true, like, you're interviewing them and they're interviewing you, but if you truly want it, like, care, you know, and, and be personal. Um, I'm a, or at least for me, make it personal. I'm a very, you know, my, uh, my philosophy as a, as a business owner, you know, there's a quote from uh, David Ogilvy that's always surround yourself, or always hire the people smarter than you, or something to that effect. You know, find people smarter than you and then hire them. And, uh, you know, everyone is smarter than me in some way. You know, everyone is a teacher. And that's um, something that I always look for. And even if it's someone who's just out of college, they, they have this whole understanding of technology and they're like Snapchatting and doing things that are like totally not what I do. So they're like the most brilliant, tumbling, Snapchatting person ever. And they're may, maybe they're you know, super green at advertising, but they can learn that. And they have the right attitude of like knowing, I, I know what I know and I wanna know what you know and be a part of that. Um, and that's everything, because we're a family. Like, I love the people I work with. Like, I tell them that I love them. I sign emails with XO and mean it. Like, that, <laughs> you know, like, it's, I, like, genuinely care that much. Yeah. There's a second part, though, too. Um, you're coming in for one job, but there may be other skills you have that we could use, like, different. Yeah. I, I, the place that I got my, uh, where I learned a lot of my skills, I went in as a, as a, um, as a compositor, but I ended up building the computers, doing the networking, doing the IT. Uh, I ended up be making myself indispensable. Without me, the company would have shut down. So, you know, you, you can expand on what you do as well. Don't you? You can be pigeon. You can you can be precise and and um, do one skill well. I'm not I'm not knocking that. But if you have a uh, a wider range that you can express to your employer that they could use, that might put you a leg up on the next person. Yeah, I have a, are you something, I have a funny story, you wanna go? You go, you, your funny story first. Okay, um, I, one of the um, interns that I had when I was a creative director uh, was this guy that was recommended to me by his cousin and he had a photography degree. And I think his cousin said something to the effect of like, listen, my cousin's a great guy, he knows a little web, he made his portfolio, but he has no employable skills. Like he has a photography degree and he's like 21. And he's like, will you meet him? And he came in like wearing all black with a black vest and he was totally just like super cool. And we sat and we talked for a while and I got a good sense of like who he was and he was like, yeah, like I just, I just wanna learn. Like whatever you need, whatever you need to do. Like he was, he was, the, he was the dude. And my boss was like, this guy, like no. Like he has, He's not, he barely knows Photoshop. Like, what are we gonna do with this guy? And I was like, listen, what if we intern him? Let me train him up, Rocky style, and I'll show you, this guy's gonna be great. I believe in this guy. And uh, he interned for like three months or something like that, and then he got hired on, and now he's been there four years, and he's the senior designer, and I left him my legacy when I left. <laughs> Uh, and he's awesome, like, and he's, a, he's truly become a great designer and his development skills have, have honed in and now he's wildly employable and, you know, he had the right, the right attitude and... I mean, I do have to, I have to piggyback back off of that because I, I do, um, the things that I've, I've noticed um, from the new guys and gals who come into our, our studio is that... Um, you know, when you walk into a studio, it's a brand new, um, it's a brand new environment that you've never been in before. And you know, with a company, if you if you're a fan of the company that you're working for, and you see the work that they're doing, and you know, 
and you see the golden jobs that's happening, like, you know, at our studio, it's, you know, it's like Oreo and Nike and, you know, Apple and all those guys. And so I've run into situations where I brought in students um, to, um, you know, graduates into my studio and they get fairly bitter really quickly because they're doing menial jobs, right? But the thing is, if, you, if I rewind the clock just a second and I went back to where I was when I first started, I would do anything. If you said lick the floor, I'd lick the floor and I'd smile afterwards, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, I wanted it so bad. I, Cause I, I was not messing around. This is what I wanted to do. I would do anything, you know, for, and I basically, I went into my employer the, who had finally, you know, said yes. And I said, I will do anything, whatever you need me to do. And he's like, all right, I'm going to hire you as a design assistant and I'm going to pay you eight bucks an hour. And I was like, okay, I can handle that. What do you need me to do? Next day I went in, I was really excited. Um, and the master schedulers of this particular company I was working for um, were like the queens of, you know, they, they ruled the roost, right? So I got in with them, right? So I was like, hey, what's going on? And I went around, I was like, hi, my name is Jason. Hi, my name is Jason, can I get you a cup of coffee? You know, and everybody was just like, get away, fresh newbie, you know? And, um, but you know, what was interesting is that um, the master scheduler um, asked me, she was testing me, now I know she was testing me, but she was like, hey, so um, you see that turtle over there? She had a turtle in her office. It was really bizarre, but she had a turtle. She's like, you know, what I want you to do is go into the art room and I want you to make a mirror for the turtle. And I was like, a mirror? I was like, okay. So I went over to the art room, I made a mirror, and I came back and put it on. I made a most beautiful mirror, put glitter all over it. It's great. And then, um, and I was like, okay, what next? And she's like, um, and the other master scheduler, she had a southern twang, she talked real slow. She's like, Jay, come on over here, pumpkin. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, so, um, so what do you need? And she's like, I, you know, I kind of want to, and she's like looking around, and I'm just, I'm dying inside, by the way. I'm dying. I'm like, I, I went to Full Sail, and I was a course director award winner, and I got a perfect attendance, hello, you know. And, <laughs> and she, and, uh, this is what I'm internally thinking when I'm like, ah, here we go. And so then she's like, um, she's like, so I've always wanted like a red velour, um, a desk mat. Um, do you think you could make me a red velour desk mat? And I was like, where am I gonna get? Oops. What? Like, like, where am I gonna get red? I know. Sorry. Um, there's gonna be a lot of beeping. Um, but they're like, you know, where where am I gonna get red velour? So I was like, all right. So I, you know, I did it in like an hour, and I made her the best red velour. You know, whatever. So then um, they liked me at this point, and they were like, could you just clean up the, the workshop? Sure, I'll clean it up. Um, made it, the, it was like you went in and you could lick off the surfaces. It was like ting, 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 and it was like, who cleaned the workshop? And I was like, I did. And, um, and so I would do anything. It didn't matter what. And you know what, the next, so within, so, oh, and then the best part was then they shipped me off to an offsite to this place called TVG, which was like the horse racing network. And I was in this like cubby hole place and I was like, oh my God, I'm dying inside. I do not want to be here, whatever. And, and what ended up happening is that they missed me so much, they brought me back, they gave me my own office and then I was working on major network campaigns, still eight bucks an hour, but I did it with a smile. And, um, and honestly, I moved up very quickly and I have to say the number one thing, you could be the best designer in the world, you can be the best animator and the most talented person, but if you're a jerk <laughs> and you think that you are the best, I have no interest in working with you. You can just, you can go, you know what? I'm not here to be a celebrity. I'm just here to do really good work. There's and, always dues to be paid in one way or another. Right, and it's yeah. like, you know, and I just want to do good work. And if I do good work, the good work will show. And then whatever follows after that, I don't care. But if you come in with an attitude and you're like, you know, I have now just descended from the heavens into your <laughs> office, you should know me. And I'm just like, please, brother, please. I, 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 building on that, I have a couple pet peeves and, and, and advice. Um, I have a couple guys that kind of were interns. They kind of came in now and then, but they came in and they just sat down at a free computer and just learned stuff. They just worked on their own things. And guess what? When they, we got really busy, those guys got hired because they were just there. Like they were coming in to learn on software that maybe they didn't have at home or, you know, just be in the environment or to do things 
when they needed to be done. They weren't being paid or anything. I just really respected them for coming in and being there and wanting to be there in the situation. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, you're here. Oh, you learned that on your own? You can do that? All right, you, you got a job right now. We, you, we needed you. You do the things that nobody else wants to do, and you do them well. <laughs> and that's what's going to get you in. But, and then uh, as, as you get... As you establish yourself too, um, if there's downtime, I mean, take a day off now and then, we need it, but if there's some downtime, also show that you're trying to learn new things. Like, I, I got guys that, that sometimes they just, they, they're nothing to do, they're just sitting around doing nothing or they don't come in or, and I respect time off, don't get me wrong, but the next job comes up and I give them a shot and they can't, they're, they're asking a billion questions on how to, how to composite it, where was this time to, there was time to learn that or go home and learn it. Like this, this job is getting to be like acting. It's competitive. And if you, if you don't know it and you're sitting there learning on the job, don't get me wrong. I respect learning on the job too, but there's a certain degree where you need to get it done and you need to get it done in a timely manner. That's a big thing that's happening a lot just with generation Y or, you know, they call it the entitlement generation because everybody thinks that they're you know, they, they, they graduate and they have this degree and they think that they just can be art director the next day. And actually, we've, we've dealt with that in the past. And um, it, you have to be humble. I think everybody up here is nailing it. You have to pay your dues. And be you patient. Be, be patient. Yeah, you can't just, you know, oh, I've been here three months. You know, where's my 25% raise? And that literally has happened more than once at our company. Um, and it's, it, it's one of those things where you just have to put in your dues. And we have one guy that we recently hired, full so grad, he was super persistent, going back to earlier in the conversations. He hit me up on LinkedIn, he sent emails, and this guy had an audio degree, and we don't really do audio uh, at our company, but he was so persistent that he wanted to work for our company that I said, you know what, let's bring him in as an intern. This guy is willing to work hard, we can teach him. It's, you can learn certain skills and trade, but like you said, it, if, you, if you can't work with people and you don't have that personality, then it's not the right fit. But if, if you, we feel like you belong with our company and you're the right fit in your family, we're gonna bring you in. And, and sure enough, that guy's skills paid off. We had a gig where we had to fly out to New York, shoot video production, and this guy ran the audio for it, and he was so persistent about being there, we didn't even plan for him to be at that shoot. He said, I will pay my way to New York get me up there, I want to show you guys what I'm capable of. That boy, yeah. And, and just by saying that, we said, all right, we will cover your trip, please go with us. And you know, he's, he's, he's like an integral asset at our company. That dude is, he was willing to work hard, he's willing to do what he needs to do. If we need an extra for a shoot or something, he's there on a Saturday. That, that guy, like you said, clean the floors. Anybody at our company, it's, it, I'll take out the trash, it's not a big deal. Like just I mean, do good work and that's all that matters. As you guys probably know here at Full Sail, weekends are not weekends anymore. Those are work days. <laughs> I'd like to um, circle back to the, actually the topic I think this is all fantastic Wait, information. Wait, can I have one more? Yes. Okay, and I don't want to speak for you, Jason, but I love your story about the mirror for the turtle. <laughs> and I think that one thing that's really important because we're, we're all up here and we've been out for a long time and you guys are all just about to get out or you just got here and you're like, oh my God, what happens next? Is that there's the concept of, of servant leadership. And I, and I feel, even though I've never worked for you, and I can probably say this, that if you had an awesome person working for you and they had a turtle and they were like struggling and having a hard time and they're like, I just really need this mirror for my turtle, that you'd make it, you know? And I think that that's an important thing that, you know, it doesn't go away. It's not like we reach some place on high now and it's, we don't, you know, we don't take out the trash. You know, there was, um, there was a time I was just- Why well, take out the trash? You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I was the, the senior, you know, uh, senior creative strategist at this interactive firm. And, uh, you know, I was doing the dishes one day. And my friend's like, what are you doing the dishes over there? What are you doing the dishes for? And I was like, who's going to do the dishes if I don't do the dishes? Like, they're dirty. Um, and that's just an, it's like just an attitude that you have to have, you know, because it, it's, it's one of those things that, like, it, it comes back and forth and it ebbs and it flows. You know, and it, it, you should never grow too big for your britches, right? Like, that's that. I, I still get, you know, I'll still, if people are working hard, I'll personally go out and get them coffee, you know? Yeah. And I just. Especially if they're staying late. You know, yeah. buy them dinner. Make dinner's right. always on the company Take when you work the trash. late. I still do all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. I, I wish some people would do it behind me. And it's, just, <laughs> and it's just showing that you actually care yeah. and you're sensitive and you're actually thinking about what the other person's needs are and then you're acting on that. And that's just something that, is either in you or it's not in you, you know? And yeah. it's, either you have it or you don't. 
there's a trigger because it builds that subliminal culture of yeah. serving others. Yeah. You know, when they see that senior leadership is doing that for everybody, obviously they're, it, it kind of gets in their blood and, and yeah. they start, you start seeing that they do that as well. It's a, a culture of appreciation. Right. And it's something that, you know, as you, as you find yourself, you know, from when you begin through your careers, you kind of like harvest it and manifest it. And it's a good indication that, you know, you're, you're in a good place. And you know who I, you know, it's always been inherent in me, but who I learned that from was Gary Jones, because he's the ultimate. Oh my like, God, yes. He's like, that guy is amazing. If you guys haven't met him, I know you know who he is, but you should go say hello to that man. He really is that awesome. And he will single hand it, like the first time I was in, you know, and to this day, like Gary and I, I still bounce ideas off of him. I tell him what I'm going through with the business and... He has a lot of experience, and um, I'll never forget the first time I was at my first job, and it was my birthday, and I was just new to LA, and I got this huge package of balloons sent to me from Gary Jones and Isis that said, happy 21st birthday, it was my 21st birthday in LA. Um, and I just thought that was probably one of the coolest things. you know. And when I was a student, and when grads would answer my emails, that was like the coolest thing ever. So to this day, that's what I do, you know? And I used to do that for my staff, I do that for, um, you know, people are working real hard for you, you know? And I'm working real hard for them, and we have a mutual respect for each other, and those are the people who stick around. Excellent. So my last question is sort of circling back to where we started, and that's, to do with the portfolio. And if the portfolio is a key to get, getting into at least getting an interview, um, it has to be somewhat important. And looking at all of your portfolio websites, you can kind of see this very high level of design and presentation. So um, I guess my question is, uh, what do you look for in a portfolio? And we see now that there are a lot of templates that are out now and, and things like that that are, people are using. So What's your advice in terms of putting together a portfolio? What are the key things to think about, you know, fr from this, the designer perspective in terms of how they should pre present their work and, the, and themselves through their portfolio? Kim. Oh, man. I think, I think I say it to young people. I say it to clients, too. If you're not in the business of, like, trying to build websites, when I go to your website, I shouldn't be looking at your website. I should be looking at whatever it is that you're in the business of doing. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the, because there are so many different options now, so many different things you can do. You can build these crazy websites and get like a WordPress template that's parallaxing back and forth everywhere. Um, if, that's, if you're not trying to do that kind of work, then why am I looking at, you know, why am I looking at the you know, mechanics of that? If you're a logo designer, I should be looking at this like minimal white background where I'm just paging through awesome logos. Or if you're doing visual effects, I should just be looking at an awesome video. Um, so I think it's really knowing how to present the thing that you actually want to see because there are so many barriers now. Um, and it's hard when you have kind of bigger, more elaborate, complicated, like me being in strategy, it's hard. Like, how do you show a strategy? Well, it's this big, complicated, many-paged kind of thing. So you have to kind of craft how you're going to make it digestible. And it's a, you know, that communication can be, can be tricky. And I know, you know, for me personally, being an independent artist and being a business owner, is that, is that for me? <laughs> okay. Um, I have... I have multiple websites, and I think that that's, you know, I, I think I said to somebody yesterday about their resume, like, you don't just have to have one. It's not like you have to completely finish the holy grail of one resume to rule them all. Like, have, especially I think when I graduated, because I, like, wanted to do motion graphics stuff, and I'd done some cool music video stuff, but, like, in reality, I could build websites, I could do this, I could do that, I could do the other. So I, like, had my super hip, super cool resume for, like, going into that job, but then I also had the, like, reality of like my basic blanket skill sets that talked about my Excel proficiency. You know, I'm like, you kind of, you can do that. Like you can craft different, you know, different pieces. So like I don't, you know, my art stuff is in one website and my work stuff is in another one. And I have a third one that's going to be done because it's just, 
you know, don't feel limited, like you have to finish this like piece de resistance that defines you. Kim, the thing that I noticed when I Googled your name, Kim Melpert, and I put designer in there, is that about six or eight things came up right at the top of the search. And it was your I'm website, your social media, Kim Alpert LinkedIn. Search. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to do a series where I go meet the other Kim Alperts and ask them what they think when they search themselves and they just get me. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a really, I feel like that would be a really awesome one. Like if you have, if you know, like there's another one out there in LA and like I know she's there. She's, I must make her nuts. You know, like she's yeah. just trying. She's like a CrossFit. She's like just trying. I'm like. I think right. I do CrossFit. That's cool. You know, I, I know that. It, yeah. <laughs> so I know if, if I'm an employer, if I'm looking for a designer, yeah. and somebody sends me something that's interesting, I, I'm going to Google their name and kind of see what comes up. Oh yeah, I'm going to so, I'm going to yeah. Google you. Like absolutely, yeah. your online personality, your persona, um, people are totally looking at that. You know, your Facebook photos. Like we're totally checking you guys out. Like we want to know who you are. We want to know if you're. You know, if you're taking selfies with like playing beer pong, you know, because some cultures, you know, there's like programmer cultures where like they really play beer pong in the office and they love that stuff and like that's cool and that's not me. <laughs> and I would like to just kind of, I'm, I'm not going to not meet you because of that, but I'm definitely going to like do my research on who you are beforehand. I'm going to do it for a client, I'm going to do it for a date, I'm going to do it for you know, potential employee. That's just the nature, I think, of the culture that we live in. I'm not gonna like hack your Snapchat, but you know, I'm not gonna check out, you know, all your deep dark secrets in the internet, but I'm gonna look I'm gonna read through your tweets and, you know, if I really care, to show you I care. <laughs> Are there any uh, final thoughts from, from any of the others? Um, I I would just um, like to say, you know, in terms of that one thing is to, to stay focused, like consolidate what it is that you do. I mean, I think when, I mean, we, I've fallen prey to this as well when I, I think, graduated. I think I, uh, my title on my card barely fit on my card. It was like director, audio post production, composer, you know, what I don't even know. It was just a lot of things. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to be the guy that, you know, does it all, you know. But mm -hmm. what ended up happening is um, what was, what was very weird is that um, I took a two-week class of After Effects, and I was like, this is bull I hate this program, <laughs> right? <laughs> Sorry, Domi, no, I, I love it now, I love it now. We, we have 50 licenses of your program, but, um, <clears throat> but you know, I, I was like, okay, I don't get it, there's this little thing, and you have to turn off the eyeball, and I don't get <laughs> it, it's like time remapping or whatever. So I, I was like, so I went to LA, and I, you know, for whatever reason, they needed after, well, I knew why, they needed After Effects artists. So I was like, so I was like, all right. So then I went in and I started, you know, animating. And what I do is I found this like tutorial um, uh, DVD set that I basically took and would do a tutorial every morning before I went to work for the course of a year and became so, um, proficient at After Effects and so fast that I, suddenly I wasn't even thinking about the program anymore and then I could actually draw upon my, um, my musical build, abilities and rhythm and, you know, and I started really falling in love with animation and I started become, becoming good at it. And then over the course of the next few years, it was always fun for me because I found this little secret of like these After Effects tutorials that I do and that was like the secret. Nobody did that. Nobody had time to do that, right? So I'd just be like the guy that was being annoying, like knowing all this stuff about After Effects, you know, and I'd go in and I'd, you know, producers were trying to break me at one point, you know, they were like, Whitmore couldn't possibly animate 60 seconds in a week, and I was like, yeah, mofo, here it is, you know, <laughs> and they were like, what, you know, so I was like, you know, started becoming like well known for being really fast, you know, and so... You know, it went from, and that's what I built, my foundation of my career was on this two-week program that I took at full sale that I thought was bull at the time that completely brought me up to where I'm at now just because I became good at it. Well, our time is about to end. Anyway, I think this was a really great discussion and I hope that it was beneficial to um, all of you that are building your portfolios. And Don't stop <laughs> Thank you for coming today.